Hey everyone, it's Sagan from Snide to Say, and welcome to today's Shocktober video, and welcome back to more The Casting of Frank Stone. Uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get right into this here. Alright, so yeah, we just woken up as uh, Maddie. I keep forgetting that what her actual name, or what she goes by. Uh, and we were now going to explore some of this mansion we're in that okay. totally isn't, you know, Rose Red. Then tell me everything you know about Augustine. <laughs> Augustine Lieber, a lead collector of obscure cultural artifacts. She pretends to be all business, but plays a long game with her cards close to the vest. She's hard to pin down. And? Ever since I arrived, I've kept my eye on things. Observations, behavior, decor. I've been building a profile. Which is? Lieber is no ordinary collector. She likes the dark stuff. The really dark stuff. She'll stop at nothing to get it. Very impressive. Okay. Now it's your turn. My turn for what? Told you what I know, and now you go. I think you pretty much covered it. Hey, uh, just catching up. So, what have you guys found? Not much. But the night's young. Not as young as you think. Let's keep looking around. Can't deny this place would make an incredible film location. Don't your dreams be dreams. Ask for permission to film there. I love your outfit, by the way. Well, thanks. It's Italian. Well, the yeah. shoes are Italian. And a belt. I got a cheat from a guy. He's got a guy who's got a pants guy. So I got these pants from his guy's guy. Had them tailored just right by the other guy I know, who also got me the blazer, which is like a super limited VIP club edition. <laughs> Get your you douche. Sure. Found the turtleneck in a secondhand shop. Scandalous. Right? <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Oh, you can be sure of that. Oh. Huh. Now that was a curious sound. Archibald McMillan. That definitely opened. Oh. Oh. Pretty. Well, hello. It's like every room in the house. Yeah, I'd say this goes a little beyond your typical security. What do you mean? I get the sense our host just has a lot of valuable property and likes to be keenly aware of everyone's comings and goings. I uh, apologize for looking around in circles there. It kind of didn't want to let me focus on it for a minute. Alright, so... I think this is the room we were in. Yeah, it's like, it's kind of trying to, like, auto... I mean, look in a certain direction. Oh, okay, and then here's the room we were in now. Anything else worth looking at? You got anything to say? Hmm. 
Hmm. Doesn't look particularly familiar, but that doesn't mean that it won't look familiar later. Ah, yes. Let's check out the other floors. Good thinking. Wait. Hold on a second. What? Before all this goes any further, I need to know how both of you got your pieces of the film. Um, well, it's no secret, really. Um, after my mom died a few months ago, I found it when I was going through her stuff. Maddie, what was your mom's name? Both, or... Was it Bonnie Rivera? Yeah, it... How did you know that? You look just like her. Did you know my mom? A long time ago. A whole other lifetime. Her younger brother, Jaime, was one of oh. my closest friends. Uncle Jaime. Oh, jeez, yeah, I, I see there was now. I never met him. I hadn't heard that Bonnie had passed. Yeah, it was pretty sudden. Wow. Maddie, that's... It's quite sad. Very... Touching. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. It's never easy to lose someone you love. Thanks. Lucky for me, it wasn't my first rodeo. <sighs> Bonnie. I wish I'd stayed in touch with her. <clears throat> Weren't you wondering where both of our film strips came from? I don't suppose you'd like to enlighten me. Of course. And? Well, I can't just tell you for free, can I? This kind of information is very valuable. What's your price? You know what? I'm gonna have to get back to you on that. Oosh. He's pissed because his piece of the film isn't the only one in existence. So he has less of a valuable thing to sell, but... What's his game? Because the way Linda phrased that question it seems like what she had being look look like she didn't even have it on a reel, you know, she had basically an envelope. So she probably had like, you know, outtake pieces of the negative or something like that. Cool statue. Hmm, missing a piece though. Guessing there should be something else in the, the hand. A chainsaw in one hand, and it's like it should be holding something. Yeah. Okay, I'm not doing that. Just, just gonna point that out. The game is bugging right now. Okay, there we go. Wow. Powerful resemblance in Augustine's family. That or Augustine loves cosplay. Oh, I'm certain it's all the same woman at this point. Whoa. Quite a piece. Look at the metalwork. It's beautiful. Tell you what it looks like. It looks like the silver coffin of uh, Genghis Khan from uh, Shadow. Uh, with Alec Baldwin. Not quite the same, but like that definitely gives me the same vibes. Face of Evil. She's for Frank trash. Stone. Sam Green took down Frank Stone. I could write a better book than this.
The faithful night, I had sent one of my deputies over to check in on things. Not my first choice. The flat foot was from out of state and a little green for my liking. Oh, what a tool. Alrighty, I mean, you know, Sam Green's the one who stopped him. Everybody knows it, and this guy doesn't even want to, you know, isn't even shy about trying to take credit. But all he had to do was hold the line and report back on anything suspicious. But when Tommy called, I knew this was it. Standing before the furnace, thought I'd stepped into the fiery depths of hell itself. And there was Stone, standing on that platform like a twisted gargoyle. A tiny bundle of in innocence held in his death grip. I'm not afraid to admit I was scared. I only had a moment to act before all was lost, so I drew my gun, took a deep breath, and made a silent prayer that my aim would strike true. Stone's corpse wasn't even cold before a whole bunch of out-of-state or out-of-towners descended on Cedar Hills, trying to grab their piece of the action. Lawyers, reporters, rubberneckers, you name it. More than a few weren't satisfied with what they found. They wanted to make a conspiracy out of it. Said he must have had an accomplice to do what he did. Me? I don't buy it. Never have. Because I know firsthand that he acted alone. Saw it with my own eyes. To all those who claim otherwise, I say this. One monster was enough for Cedar Hills. Okay, the only thing I don't like about these captions are giving me on the side here, which these are great, but like they're not they're not showing a hundred percent of like what's in the book here. I'm guessing they're they're sort of pared down to sh give you what's relevant. Yeah, because like it says, but when Tommy called, I knew this was it, and then it starts the next paragraph. There was like another line to that paragraph, which was, The rookie was at the mill, blindly walking into the lair of the monster, no match for stone. I had to act fast. No man left behind, his pops would say, from his time in the service. Yeah, and then after his aim would strike, strike true, it says, Every day since, I thank whatever power watches over us, but it did just that, and stone dropped like his namesake, never to commit another act of evil. Stone's death and the exposure of his crimes, there's a lot of questions, and nobody wanted answers more than me. It soon emerged that Stone had been part of the convict work program at Cedar, uh, Cedar Still had signed up to. Well intentioned? Undoubtedly. Ill advised? Definitely. These shrinks and psychologists have a lot of grand ideas. They also have precious little understanding of a creature like Frank Stone. They see what they want to see, hear what they want to hear. So they all cry, he's cured, it's a miracle. But I'll take it from someone who knows about these things. You can't cure evil. Some folks are born rotten, and if they're left alone, that rot will spread, infecting the foundations of everything that the right-thinking people like you and me hold precious. After Cedar Hills learned to its cost what kind of man Frank Stone was, those same bosses who hired him threw up their arms and said, How could we know? He never gave any sign. He kept himself a real loner. And the thing is, and that's the thing, nobody knew Stone well enough to guess that he was really up... Uh, this word's getting hard to see because her hand's casting a shadow. And I can't get a different angle on here. But he kept everything inside, including his darkest secrets. And then, then it actually starts this paragraph. So, okay, that's that's about all there is. I should check on Maddie. Can't be easy meeting someone from her mom's past. Yeah. Hmm. Now, what would you do if it was you here instead of me? No way. You'd be climbing the walls looking for a way out. Okay. Stan? Psh, not in a million years. No way. Okay, so once again, the same box, which is already downstairs, is now up here. What is this thing?
Let me take one quick look. Augustine has a uh, unique collection. I've never wow. seen anything like this stuff. Okay. You sure would get a kick out of this place. And then you'd probably kick me out of this place and keep it all to yourself. Who are you talking to? Mm, uh, no, I, I wasn't. I could hear you. I was talking to my mom, to Bonnie. I was in Berlin, you know, at school when I heard she was sick. But it was my midterms and she said I should just come home when I finished. So I did. But by then it was too late. She died while I was over the Atlantic. It all happened so fast, it doesn't feel like she's gone. So I just kind of pretend like she isn't. She was a good talker. <laughs> yeah, she was. Hey, look at this. This was just last summer. I know you said it had been a really long time, but can you tell me anything about her from when you knew her? Ah, uh, gosh. Well, she was the most intimidating girl I've ever met. Even after I got to know her. She did everything she wanted to do and nobody could stop her. <laughs> and that sounds like mom. Any good stories? Yeah. Yeah, there is something I've been thinking about. I've never told anyone else. It was a long time ago. We were just kids making a movie. Jaime, Chris, and me. Everything's still so fuzzy about what happened, but there's one thing that always just stuck in my mind. Isabel. That night, we were on our way home from picking up a new camera. We were driving past the Rivera's house. The garage door was wide open, full of light. And the craziest fucking sound you ever heard was just tearing out of there in every direction. And right in the middle of the bass player, nice. Was Bonnie. I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone so completely in tune with themselves. The only that thing that mattered face. was that moment. Nothing else. Yeah. That was your mom. Thank you. Hey guys. Look. What? I don't see anything. Ah! There! Right there! Oh my god, there's someone out there. Hey everyone, uh Sagan from the editing room here. I just wanted to make a quick comment because I I feel like a lot of pressure when these choice moments come up. Thankfully this one wasn't timed, but I actually didn't notice that, and so I felt like I had to make a decision really quickly. But this is the first time we've seen a third choice pop up like this, and it seems to be the result of like having found a clue, at least I'm assuming that, based on the magnifying glass. So I'm wondering if that's because I found the hidden door into the security room there, and then like that choice wouldn't have been present had I not found it. If that was the case, if I only had the two choices, probably would have okay. gone with the, the flippant answer here, uh, just because... It'd be funnier. And it seems more in line with Linda's attitude at the moment. But since we found the third answer, I felt like that was the decision to make here. I have a feeling Augustine expected something like this might happen. She's got this place wired with enough cameras she could catch a mouse. Good security probably means we're pretty safe. 
Right. Um, so, do you think we should find Augustine? Give her a heads up? Even if you wanted to tell her, good luck finding her. She said she was going to her private reliquary. That's a place for artifacts, right? There's artifacts all over the place. Right. So, if you were gonna have a private place for extra special, extra valuable artifacts, maybe you'd put them behind a door like that. Oh. You've got a point. Can't we just knock? I doubt anything can get through that, including sound. Which means it might be the safest place to be, whether Augustine's in there or not. Okay. You wanna, you know, shut the window? So we're back on the cedar still. We're back in 1980. What's taking them so long? I thought we were gonna have a production meeting before we shoot. The fans already all loaded up. I read an article that said girls don't like it when guys get all twisted up about their punctuality. They find it controlling. What? Why did you need an article to tell you that? I just thought you might find that information useful. I'm not trying to control Chris. Just got a lot to do. Uh huh. Trying to figure out whether Linda's like on the spectrum a bit. <laughs> hey, right really on serious. time! Time to get cooking. What? Nothing. Nothing. Just. Try to keep a low profile. Bonnie's snooping around. All right. Is everybody ready to get this production meeting started? We got a big night ahead of us. Guys, I, I gotta tell you, my mind's going like a million miles an hour right now. Did you know you Does can get like every knob? newspaper article ever written at the library? It's insane. It's all right there. No. Tell me more. I've spent like all day <laughs> looking up every single thing I could find about Frank Stone, the mill, the murders. We are sitting on a freaking gold mine here. Sounds like a productive day. <clears throat> and yes, I had some help from my uh, assistant. I aim to please. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Now that you are an official member of the team, Gotta wear the team jersey! <laughs> wow. This is... <laughs> this is amazing. I'm... I'm honored. You wanna wear the stripes? You gotta earn the rights. I promise I'll be the best ancillary producer you've ever seen. <laughs> Production assistant. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Feast your eyes. Whoa. Wait, where's Sheriff Green? Ah, uh, yeah, so Dad's never exactly been stoked about that. But I thought he got the guy. Yeah, and Sheriff Kushik took all the credit. People around here knew what was up, but... Let me see that. This one's a 10-year retrospective. They go into all sorts of grisly details left out of the press the first time around. And Dad got a little more credit, too. This is big deal stuff. We're making our movie in the very same spot it went down. Can't beat that. Stone's victims were real people. This was a real person. Yeah? So? I don't know. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to look at their picture. And this is suddenly now a problem for you? It's not a problem. It's just a little weird. You were just like super gung ho when I got here. What gives, man? Nothing. I just don't want to like exploit any of the victims or whatever. We're not going to exploit Stone's victims. I'm just trying to maximize the potential of our main location. That's how you make a good movie. Hmm. I mean, she is missing the point. <laughs> I 
think you're missing the point. It's not about the mill. So what's the big deal? You don't think you're, like, a little too excited about everything that happened there? Jaime, if it bothers you so much, you can always stay home. Chris? Um, he's kind of number one on the call sheet. What does that mean? He's the main actor. We can't shoot without him. Yeah, I know. I was just kidding. Obviously. Obviously. Rob and I are gonna look for any more locations in the mill connected to stone where we can shoot. And I'm gonna go make this thing any way I have to. Yeah, I've heard that was gonna negatively affect our relationship, but whatever. The one thing I don't get is why Chris is so, like, fixated on this. Like, it's not like there's a film festival or even an indie one, or at least that's been mentioned, or anything like that. Like, why is she so obsessed, like, with making this film Here, this way and not any other way? So we're yeah. looking for Frank Stone references. We're looking for anything referencing specific locations in the mill that could be associated with Frank Stone. The mill's a pretty huge place. That's why I'm sure there's got to be something we haven't found yet. Definitely possible. We'll find it. Murder Mill. Murder Mill script by Christine Gordon. Copyright 1980. Here. Some other ideas by Jaime Rivers mill and Linda Cassidy. Mill projections dire for fall season. It mentions Frank? No, but it goes into the mindset of the workers. People were depressed. There were suicides. At the mill? Not at the mill, but like people who worked there or got laid off. Damn. This was a year or two before the murders started. Does not sound like a fun place to spend a 12 hour shift. There are a couple articles like this. The mill was in serious decline. But if it doesn't mention Frank. I don't know. It's all related to him, uh, to the way he was, or, or why he did what he did, or something. That's your expert opinion? It's just a hunch. I appreciate the extra dialogue, but it's kind of annoying when I'm trying to read all this other shit. So no more edits, let's go film. There is good light inside to film this I shot. I some of these today, too. What's this that? is the Obituaries from around monologue the time that Jaime was doing. And a little before. Oh, good thinking. Jaime. Clamor, Clamor in Hospital. Mama and... Mama's in the house of... I mean, I'm not really sure what that... Oh. I can't believe Mom's finally okay. getting out. That, there's the translation. I mean, hospital called. Mom will be home Sunday. Okay. I had forgotten what Sunday in Spanish was. Okay. Tom Holt interview. Who's Tom Holt? Oh, Tom Holt's the the guy with, with the dog at the mill at the and when. Oh, I just picked that up. I think I've like besides the flashlight in the beginning, that's like. First thing I've actually picked up. The question is, do I have a way to play it? Because that looks like a tape recorder there that's been dismantled. I'm sure no one was sad to see it go. Okay. End of an era. Cedar Steel Mills permanently closed. August 24th, 1967. Cedar Steel Mill, once the industrial heartbeat of our town, is to perma be permanently closed after over 40 years of almost continuous operation. Founded by Howard Kinsey Tester, Tester in 1921, the mill in its wartime heyday produced high-quality steel that was distributed across the nation. Mr. Tester's legacy was honored by his daughter Morgan in a statement given on Wednesday morning. Morgan Tester's statement suggested that the family's decision to close the mill permanently had been taken out of respect the memories of those murdered on its premises by former employee Stone. Not everyone was convinced by this justification, however. And unfortunately, the type is a little too. I can read it, but like, his thumb's covering part of it too, so. Uh, 
Journalists sure can't get enough of Frank Stone. The secrets of Killer Stone come to light. It's September 16th, 1963. The Cedar Hills tries to make sense of recent events at the Cedar Steel Mill. More disturbing details are starting to emerge about the man at the center of the scandal, 36-year-old machinist Frank Stone, who was shot dead by police during a violent altercation last Friday. Stone, her own share of Kusich, is linking with multiple unsolved disappearances over the last three years, has been described by those who knew him as a loner, creep, and oddball. Most shocking are the growing rumors that Stone was taken on by Cedar Steel and its owners, the Tester family, despite a prior police record for violence. Old newspaper article. Frank Stone committed several murders. When Frank does okay with all this Frank Stone stuff? I don't think Linda particularly cares. I think she's more interested in the cinematography aspect. See if there's anything else to look at. Yeah. Oracle of the Omniverse. Guru Connor Barnum. Just through my own practices, learned from the journeys through the American interior that I successfully elevated my consciousness to the point that I was able to visualize another Cedar Hills, one beyond the veil of our reality. This little town seems so very much like my own, yet so fascinatingly different in countless subtle ways. To give one example, the Calhern family still owned the drugstore, but the manager behind the counter was none other than young George, the son who died so tragically some years ago. Here he was, in healthy middle age, a season of life I knew he had never reached. An I drew omniverse? Far out. I drew two conclusions from my meditative voyage. One, that every journey through life offers almost incalculable variation. And while we may each have only finite possibilities on our own journey, there may be other journeys taken by mirror versions of ourselves that visit all destinations. Two, the different planes of reality are not so much separate rivers running through in parallel as they are interconnected tributaries flowing to a single vast ocean of experience and possibility. To explore this idea further, we must first consider some that cuts off on the next page. It's an interesting little meta commentary on like the decision tree that basically drives this game. Yeah, you know, every decision I make changes the story we're going through, but due to like say the cutting room floor feature, I can't do it now. But like after I beat the game, I could go back, make a different decision, and play out from there and see what happens. Get a different ending, or or at least go through a different experience. Oh hey, look, there's the fucking toolbox again. Oh cool, I can listen to the tape. anything like that night before or since I don't reckon I ever will again <laughs> heck I don't know if I would have even made it out alive if it weren't for Sam Green the man's a hero damn shame that no good sheriff's taking all the credit him crying shame he all but gave up on finding stone at the mill Sam Green he knew better he came right up and told me we had to search every nook and cranny of that place. And if we had waited just a second longer, well, there'd be one less beautiful baby in the world. Or worse. Sam took Stone down just in the nick of time. Like something out of a movie. Waiting for the... Because they haven't said who the baby was. I'm wondering if it's Jaime. Thanks to Mr. Holt, nobody questioned my dad's story. Wow. Oh. They were friends after that. My dad gave the eulogy when Mr. Holt passed. Oh, right. That's... Sorry, that was Robert talking. Yeah, he's the sheriff's son. So hold on, that I just got an achievement. So Lumpkin and Livin learn that Tom stopped. Show me the full description. Yeah, learn that Tom stopped drinking due to Sam's kindness. So perhaps the fact that we didn't call him out on the 
part that you've been drinking. Okay. Again, same, same box, same cutouts, but nothing in it. No explanation of what it is or why it's there. It's got to be some kind of collectible progress thing. But we haven't come close to finding anything of it. At least, as far as I can tell, and I've been pretty thorough. Okay, I think that's everything to look at. And yeah, we're going to have to cut this episode here. I'm sorry, guys. I, I wanted to have the conversation with Linda, but um, I am running low on time, so I need to get this episode edited and out. So. Uh, but uh, I will be doing more of this. It'll probably be, you'll probably see it uh, Monday next week at this point, because this should be Thursday's video. If it isn't, forgive me. Uh, sometimes different things happen. But uh, And then, yeah, we'll have some different content this weekend, and we'll be back on Monday with more Frank's Down. So... Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more Shocktober content. Until next time, you stay classy, Internet.